Hello everyone, my name is Denzel Rodriguez, your personal finance geek, and today I'm going to be answering a question from someone that submitted a form on my website, submitted a contact form. If you want to get your questions answered, I suggest you fill out a form, and I will be going through all the different um, forms that get filled out, and I'm going to read some questions here uh, to really help people that are either on the fence you haven't signed up for a program yet. You haven't, you know, hired anyone for any coaching. Maybe you're brand new to Velocity Banking, Infinite Banking, Kingdom Authority. These are all brand new. You're trying to just, you know, get a little grounding here first. My recommendation, like I always say, is watch my videos. Just watch them. They're really thorough. I go through scenario after scenario. And when you get to that point where you're ready for some one-on-one -on -one help where I can run your numbers and create the plan for you to create that debt-free timeline so we can start building a wealthy kingdom for ourselves. All right. So question of the day is from Suzanne. Hello, Suzanne. She says, hello, Denzel. I have watched so many of your amazing videos. Thank you. And I appreciate your info so much. I'm not sure if you've covered my questions already, but I haven't heard the answers. So here goes nothing. Is the premium included with the MEC limit? Okay, so we're talking about the infinite banking concept now, which is developing or creating a high cash value life insurance policy to create sustainable wealth. Okay, so our question is, is the premium included with the MEC limit or is that completely on its own? Correct that the premium and the MEC are two separate numbers, but they both integrate. Example, I personally have a high cash value life insurance policy designed for the infinite banking method where I'm putting in 70,000 a year into my policy. From that 70,000, $7,000 goes towards my premium and the rest goes towards my cash value. Okay, so 7,000 is the cost of my life insurance. And for that $7,000 cost, I have the ability to put in a total of 70,000. The 70,000 now gets divvied up, right? So it goes to the premium, it goes to the insurance cost, um, when we're designing the infinite banking concept, we add term life insurance to minimize our cost of insurance, maximize our ability to overfund the policy in the first you know, couple of years that or however long we decide to fund the policy for. So my MEC limit is correlated exactly to the premium. So if I want to put in 70,000 into my policy, my premium, my base annual premium per year has to be 7,000. The insurance company allows us to put 10 times what our premium is per year. Okay, so that answers that right there. Then she also says, and also, if you currently make, let's say 5,000 a month, she says, can you cut out the middleman, the line of credit? So now she's going into velocity banking and maybe combining the two concepts, right? So if I'm making 5K a month, is there a way I can cut out the line of credit by just putting my paychecks straight into the policy every month if I have a 60K MEC? So 60K MEC, 5,000 a month, five times 12, I believe that's 60,000, yep. So what she's getting at is if I was to analyze the amount of money that I make in a year, could I set my MEC limit to that amount and then just send my paychecks to that policy each and every month? And then she's saying to, uh, to just pay bills from cash value loans just borrowing against the policy each and every month. This way, I could have all of my yearly income growing at this tax-free interest rate, right? And offsetting my borrowing costs to pay my bills, okay? 
Um, and let's see. And then she goes on to saying that you make more money. Okay, yeah. So, and as you make more money every year, then over time you can start paying back the policy loans that six to seven thousand a month because each and every month that you put 5k in whatever you take out is going to be an outstanding loan right so if i put 5k in and let's say i take 3500 out so i've got 1500 cash flow that that stood in there right what she's getting at is when i go to the following month when i put another 5000 in I'm not paying back the 35, not yet. I'm adding an additional 5K to the principal of that insurance uh, policy, that cash value. That's what she's getting at. And what she's saying is I can just basically, as long as I have good cash flow, I can offset what I take out. I don't care what the interest rate is being charged on the money I'm taking out because the insurance company is crediting crediting me a higher interest rate on the money that I take out all right so yes Suzanne that can work we don't even have to use the line of credit there are some cases where we do use the line of credit and here's where you would get messed up here in terms of your numbers so far so a couple of things we want to iron out is first and foremost you got to remember that from that 60K mech, what do I have? A $6,000 cost, right? 6,000 times 10, 60,000. So no matter what, my base premium is 6,000. So that's gonna be the first insurance expense that I have to get past. So if I'm making 60,000 a year and you wanna have the ability to put your whole entire your whole entire paycheck into that policy and have the ability to take money out you want to make sure that you have initial capital to start with so if you had initial capital like maybe half of 60 and then start putting in the 5k the 5k then that could you know that could work putting in 5000 a month with a 60k mech then what the insurance company does is, you know, they basically they set up a payment plan where they take the 60000 that you want to be able to contribute for that whole year. They divide it by 12 and your monthly payment would be that. But here's the problem. When I put that 5K in, understand that that monthly payment towards the insurance company, a portion of that 5K is going towards the premium and insurance expense. And then the rest goes towards your cash value. Another thing you want to make sure or be aware of is whatever money is in cash value, I only have the ability to borrow 90 to 95% of whatever is in there. So now you can see how the number is lowering and lowering. So that's why we would need to have initial capital first. Another thing you want to make sure or be aware of is that when I split my insurance premium in, in um, payments monthly, right? So 12 payments, the insurance company is going to tack on a fee for that. Just like your, uh, just like any other insurance that you would have, car insurance, homeowners, like when you pay it monthly, you pay more than the person that paid it annually. So if you wanted to put in $60,000 into your life insurance policy, I know me personally, I would want to work my way up to 60 first, right? To have that as a one-time payment. So when I started my policy, I built up my cash first. And to speed up the process, I had a line of credit. I had credit cards that I shifted. I leveraged the bank's money to establish my own private bank for a total of 70 grand, which I then borrowed from immediately to then pay off those leveraged monies, pay nothing in interest, right? Or very little, like a couple of dollars. I remember paying, it was like a couple of dollars to like move the money that I wanted to move to help me get to the 70K, right? For the whole entire year. 
So now all that money's in there. It's growing at 4 to 6%. I borrow against it. I pay off the debt that I leveraged. And then the income that I make per month, depending on how big a person's mech space is, I can either dump more money into the policy, right? Paying back the policy loans or just increasing it well beyond the 70K, all right? So those are a couple of uh, things that you want to be, you know, be aware of. So you don't want to get in the position where now you're funding this really expensive policy and you don't have the capital and you don't have the cash flow and then come to find out you notice that damn near all of your uh, a big portion of your money is going towards premium expense because you had such a high mech limit so if i'm gonna have a very very high mech limit 60 100k 200k whatever the mech limit is that is directly correlated with the premium it's they're they're like one of the same. So whatever the premium is, you take that number, times it by 10, that's the most amount of money I can put into that policy. All right, Suzanne, so I hope those details help you get a little better understanding of how I should initially fund the policy. What I do with most of my clients is we go for annual funding. We like to go for annual funding so that we minimize that cost of insurance. We have more capital to work with, more to borrow from, and that's where that Velocity banking can come into play to help you out in the first couple of years. And then when your income goes up and your cash flow goes up and you're debt free, then the line of credit becomes obsolete because you don't have to borrow anymore because you have all this cash flow, you got all this capital and you got more income. My name is Denzel. Hope you have a wonderful day and God bless.